This video will teach you how to repair a Sennheiser ME3 headset microphone. This is the standard headset mic for many Sennheiser wireless packages. The microphones are attached to the transmitters with a threaded locking collar, so any strain placed on the cable eventually breaks the fine wires inside. Sennheiser has a minimum repair charge of $109. The mic has a list price of $160 and a discount price of about $140. For the cost of a new connector, about $12, you can repair the mic yourself. Nowhere on the internet could I find a wiring diagram for this mic, so I carefully carved away the strain relief with an X-Acto knife, then carved away the clear material inside until I could see how the microphone was wired. I found the connector had three wires, a red wire, a yellow wire, and some bare copper that was used as a shield. The yellow wire and the bare copper were connected together and soldered to the middle ring on the jack. The red wire was soldered to the tip of the jack. The yellow wire was difficult to see because of some heat shrink that was placed over both the yellow wire and the twisted copper jacket. You can see the yellow wire peeking out in the close-up photo above. A digital multimeter is being used here to confirm that the red wire is indeed connected to the tip and that the yellow wire along with the bare copper is attached to the ring or the center connector on the jack. I'd already determined where the break in the wires was by wiggling the strain relief and the next uh, operation was cutting off the wire, uh, the cable rather, past the point where it was damaged and that's what's being done here. Next the uh, barrel of the new connector is unscrewed, the plastic shield is removed and uh, those two parts starting with the metal barrel are slid over the cable so they are in place when we're done soldering things back together. In the next step three different sizes of heat shrink material are slid over the cable to form a new strain relief uh, when we're done soldering the new connector on. First the largest size black is slid in place then the medium size green and finally the blue material the smallest is slid onto the cable. The black outer jacket of the cable is then stripped away revealing the yellow wire, the red wire, and the bare copper strands which are twisted together. The insulation is stripped from the ends of the yellow wire and the red wire and then the yellow wire is twisted together with the bare copper in preparation for soldering to the connectors. The bare wire ends are now dipped into soldering paste to get them ready for soldering to the connectors. I shot this video on my deck in bright sunlight the screen on the video camera was very difficult to see. I thought I had the wires in frame. Instead I had their shadows uh, as I was tinning the wires. In any event they were successfully tinned. The yellow wire with the attached bare copper is uh, threaded through a hole for the ring portion of the connector and soldered in place here. Now it's the red wire's turn to be soldered to the pad for the tip of the 3.5 millimeter jack. The next step is to remove the excess wire sticking out from the solder joints. Starting with the red wire, a pair of small diagonal cutters is used. Nail clippers uh, work equally well or better. Uh, I found the diagonal cutters before I found nail clippers, so that's what I used and the wires are carefully trimmed away here so that the uh, clear plastic sleeve and the metal body of the jack can be fitted down eventually over this assembly. Needle nose pliers are used to carefully crimp the uh, two ears on the back of the jack over the black outer insulation of the cable to help lock it in place and prevent the delicate wires from being pulled or broken away from the new solder connection. 
Now the blue heat shrink material is slid down into position and the heat gun is used to shrink it. And shrink it. And now it's the uh, turn for the next size heat shrink material, the, the green material to be slid down into place and shrunk down with the heat gun. that one. And finally the black material is slid into place and shrunk with the heat gun. The clear plastic sleeve, part of the new connector, is slid up into position and that is then followed by the metal body or sleeve of the new connector which is slid up and screwed into the front portion of the jack completing the repair of this microphone. Now all we need to do is take the mic back to church, plug it in, test it, and make sure it's working. Look, it's working. It's working. It's working. It's on. And it's working very well. Because you can hear my voice. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. This is good.